um, the Honorable Chief Justice and President of the Supreme Court, the Honorable Speakers present, uh, members of the Judiciary and the Judicial Service Commission. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Now, uh, Your Excellency, the President of Kenya, it is uh, a pleasure for me to accompany you to this uh, very important occasion of the State of the Judiciary and Administration of Justice report presentation by the Honorable Chief Justice. Your Excellency, um, it, is, it was my first time to go to the office of the Chief Justice. I have never been there. <laughs> and um, when we came here to witness this uh, very important occasion, I am the only one here who is a bit out of place because I am not appropriately dressed. <laughs> I want to apologize, uh, the Honorable Chief Justice. I was dressed to go to another occasion out of town, but when my boss uh, told me that I should be here, I had no choice. I know you had invited me, but my invitation may have delayed. <laughs> but it is not out of disrespect <coughs> that I am dressed this way. I, I want to apologize to you. Um, or, or it, and it has nothing to do with what I have said before. You know, I know we have said many things before. But I want to say that uh, we respect and have the highest regard for our judicial system. We do. Both as individuals and as a government. When I was first elected as a member of parliament in 1998, I met uh, an old uh, member of this uh, of the of, of the of the judicial arm of government mr paul muite and as a young man then at 31 years i was very robust in defense in defense of the government but he called me aside once and told me young man supporting the government is good but part of supporting the government is to criticize it when it goes wrong. That demonstrates you support the government. So sometimes, Chief Justice, when, we, when you hear us criticize uh, the judiciary, it's because we support the judiciary. <laughs> because we got the lesson from a member of this profession, that that is how to support uh, that's how you support what you believe in. If they sometimes do something that you don't agree with, you raise your concerns. So it is in that context, and only that context sometimes, that we make uh, comments that are sometimes critical of the judiciary, and it is because we believe that our judiciary um, is made of professional people, and we expect the highest of uh, service. For, from the judiciary. As I stand here, I have had, I have accompanied the president when we went to deliver our State of the Nation address that is a requirement of the Constitution by His Excellency the President to Parliament. We are here today on this occasion of the State of the Judiciary and Administration of Justice report again to be presented to Parliament. I am looking for the occasion when J.B. Muturi and uh, Lusaka will also present to us <laughs> the state of the legislature report. 
because we are all public servants and uh, the same standard must be used for every arm of government so that it is not their business to only receive reports from us. <laughs> and, and I'm looking forward, maybe an interpretation of the Constitution, Chief Justice may help us. <laughs> and having said that, uh, and members of the legislature are here, I have heard the statement of the registrar, and she made a very robust statement. She said, that um, we are in a situation where we are robustly independent but constructively interdependent. I think that that's really a, a befitting statement. And for us to make strides going into the future, I believe that that should be the engagement so that the legislature, for example, we have in the executive identified, for example, a problem with Kenya Airways. Kenya Airways is a national carrier. Kenya Airways influences our tourism sector, carries our horticulture sector, which are the primary revenue earners for our foreign exchange. It would be responsible for us as a government to allow Kenya Airways to go down. Because with it, if it goes down, it will go down with our tourism, it will go down with our horticulture sector, and it will go down with our revenues from Kenya Airports Authority because 70% of the revenue of Kenya Airports Authority comes from Kenya Airways. So when we structure a mechanism to ensure that we have a win-win situation to salvage a very important strategic um, institution like Kenya Airways. Our legislature come in between and make the whole situation toxic and tell us you want to sell this institution, you want to do this. Nothing has happened. The cabinet has just approved for a transaction to be put together so that we can find a befitting mechanism that will uh, make sure that Kenya Airways survives, continues to help us with our tourism, continues to help us with our horticulture, and ensure that this national asset is made viable. We want to request that the, the legislature gives us the space, as the executive, to structure this relationship and we are a responsible government that it will go through cabinet. Eventually, when a decision is made, we will take it to uh, the National Assembly and the Senate for their approval so that we are all on board. But it is unfair, even before we start, all manner of allegations are flying around. We must be robustly independent, but constructively interdependent in the words of the registrar. And lastly, because this is a good occasion to say some of these things, we welcome what the Chief Justice has said, that there is now synergy being built around all agencies that are engaged in the fight against corruption, so that there is no blame game, so that we build synergy so that we can use the resources of this country properly and we can eliminate wastage and we can stop corruption. That is as it should be. We want to ask, and uh, the Chief Justice has said, every Kenyan must play their part. Every sector must play their part. So that in the fight against corruption, we must prosecute that fight on the basis of facts. You've heard, for example, that oh, the government has lost 21 billion in Kimwarer and I don't know, Aror Dam, which is a flat lie. The money in question is about 7 billion. And for every coin that has been paid, we have a bank guarantee. 
no money will be lost because we are a responsible government. We have engaged every arm of government to make sure that public resources are safe and therefore the correct information must be used as we target the fight against corruption so that we can rail the true culprits. Sometimes when we say nine billion has been lost and then when it goes to court, it is 100 million. The public is asking, what happened to 8.1 billion? So we shoot ourselves in the foot. So as has been said, our commitment as the executive, as the legislature, and as the judiciary, and as has been said ably by the Chief Justice, there is now a mechanism and a synergy around what we must do so that we can deliver for the people of Kenya. We must proceed on that basis and on the basis of factual information so that we can do justice to our country and we can do justice to the use of public resources in the right manner. I thought I should say this so that the narrative that is being built, that everything government is doing is corrupt, we must, we must, we must be sincere and we must be, we, we must be honest about what is going on so that we don't criminalize or we don't bastardize or we don't create propaganda around every government initiative that is going on. Ladies and gentlemen, I have said more than I should because uh, I was here on the invitation of His Excellency the President, but I hope next time, Chief Justice, I will get my own invitation. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's now my pleasure to request His Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya to make his remarks.